<laughs> Berenstain Bears. The hidden underbelly. We're not going to talk about the Berenstain Bears today, I don't think, anymore. That was a special segment in yesterday's video. What I want to talk about today is more um, information that Joseph Murphy shares about cultivating uh, a sense of wealth from within, which we hear so much about, and I find is much more difficult to apply than um, we hear about a lot of the time. It's a much more, I like to say, nuanced practice in a... Um, it's more intimate and nuanced in regards to the inner work we're doing a lot of the time than uh, we are led to believe by various LOA and law of assumption and manifesting teachers talking about it. Cultivating this sense of wealth, or as I like to say, supply, or as Joel Goldsmith said, the quality of supply that is naturally there within us that we just have to bring out and express, embodying that and then expressing it, um, ain't no joke. In, in all likelihood, like so many of these uh, principles in terms of applying them, it's going to humble us a lot of the time. We are going to make progress seemingly and then fall flat on our ass. You know, as I say in my book, The Law of Attraction Simplified, a lot of this practice can be like you're riding on the horse, you feel good, and then you get knocked off the horse. Get knocked off the horse. And then you have to get back on. And it can be humbling and uh, seem self humili self humili self humiliating can't say that word today, to get back on. It can seem tough to get back on, but you just got to get back on. And gradually, when you get used to applying these principles more and more, you learn how to get back on with less of a fuss. That doesn't always mean you you fall off the horse and you're able to get right back on right away. But it does mean it becomes less of a big deal because you realize this is something like this has happened inwardly before, and you can get back on that horse and keep on riding. And sometimes you're going to fall off a lot. And uh, when we fall off a lot, we just get back on as best we can, as quickly as we can. And at the same time, we use patience. Patience and humility are uh, two virtues, just like supply is a virtue, um, that are really discussed well in so many religious contexts, patience and humility. Um, you know, my Zen background really kind of the Zen teachers that I, you know, studied and then, you know, lived with in, in, you know, one case, they really, they really preached and, and not only preached, they walked the walk when it came to patience and humility. Uh, LOA, law of attraction advice is not that good at that. Usually we become very impatient a lot of the time. We want we want our desire and it hasn't shown up yet and we freak out. Oh, ah. um, we're impatient a lot of the time. And uh, impatience in a way can be good. I remember Amanda Francis saying, author of Rich as Fuck, another really good example of somebody who can teach you about cultivating this wealth mindset legitimately from within. I remember her saying, like, she's like, you know, I never really was that good at being patient. And I dig it when she says it because um, <laughs> she knows what the hell she's talking about. And she kept on doing stuff and taking action and feeling inspired to change her life. If you read her book, Rich as Fuck, she talks all about this. Um, but generally speaking, we need more patience when it comes to applying these, uh, these principles. You know, I reference that Neville quote um, in a recent video where he says, one thing we really need is patience. He's like, I must emphasize the importance of patience in this process. People forget that. And they certainly forget the humility aspect. So oh, I manifested this, I manifested that. There's a, I have a low tolerance for that. I'll link above to a episode I did a Joel Goldsmith episode, actually, talking about the foolishness, in my opinion, of, um, you know, talking about how you manifested this and manifested that. So let's move on to the power of your subconscious mind, shall we? And understand that Murphy's advice, as great as it is, as great as all this advice is that we've been going over, that we always go over, all these great law of attraction, law of assumption teachers, um, 
it's often not going to seem as it's not going to actually be as straightforward as it seems as Murphy makes it seem here at least for a lot of us I hope it is but uh usually it's not for me and for <laughs> 95% plus of people I work with it's not as simple as just doing one technique and changing your life you know unless that technique is really uh embodied within you as goldsmith would say unless that technique is something like the absolute method where it's like i'm connecting with god that's my technique or like i'm surrendering or letting go that's my technique that's a mature <laughs> that's a mature approach but there's no special technique do you know what's special you and you you got to bring out you in the best sense of, of the word so Murphy um, called this section the ideal method for building a wealth consciousness. Now, if you know, if you listen to what I just said, there is no ideal method, okay? So keep that in mind. But Murphy writes here, this is a great section. He says, perhaps you are saying as you read this chapter, I need wealth and success. This is what you do. Repeat for about five minutes to yourself, three or four times a day, wealth, success. These words have tremendous power. They represent the inner power of your subconscious mind. Anchor your mind on this substantial power within you, then conditions and circumstances, circumstances corresponding to their nature and quality will be manifested in your life. You are not saying, I am wealthy. You are dwelling on real powers within you. There is no conflict in the mind when you say wealth. Furthermore, the feeling of wealth will well up within you as you dwell on the idea of wealth. The feeling of wealth produces wealth. Keep this in mind at all times. Your subconscious mind is like a bank, a sort of universal financial institution. It magnifies whatever you deposit or impress upon it, whether it is the idea of wealth or of poverty. Choose wealth. What a great effing section. Great advice. We've talked about this several times. Um, and this is a really effing uh, direct way to access the wealth, the quality of supply within you. Um, Murphy, in his book, How to Attract Money, he talks a little bit more in depth about this. Um, Claude Bristol, also uh, The Magic of Believing. He Both, I think, Murphy in the... in. How to Attract Money. I'm not going to try to pull up that page here, even though it's in this book. Um, and Bristol, they talk about utilizing a mirror as well while you do this. So you can say the word you can say the word wealth or success or both those words or a phrase or similar thing, an impersonal thing. No, I am. You can just say that over and over again. And Murphy says elsewhere, you can say it in front of a mirror as well. And that might even be more powerful because you just see yourself and you just keep on saying, well, success. You do something like that, say phrases like that. And Murphy says, do it three or four times a day. Really interesting. In about five minutes each time. Five minutes of doing that is not a short period of time. So if you spend about 20 minutes a day, 15, 20 minutes a day doing this, and you break it up during the day, it should have some kind of su subconscious effect. You know, um, this is everything we've been talking about and always talk about. Uh, it, it's a really good method. And, you know, if you want to, you can also supplement that by doing some, um, you know, affirming and like during the day. You can also just be saying wealth, success, wealth, success while you're doing the dishes or going about your day doing things. You can be cultivating that in your mind. Again, this is Sammy Ingram type stuff. This is like stuff we talked about at length and I always talk about. So it's a great method. Great, great method. And you don't have to personalize it. There does not have to be an I am there. An I am can often be detrimental. Murphy's about to go over that in this next section, which is another great section. Um, the next section said is called Why Your Affirmations for Wealth Fail. And Murphy writes, I have talked to many people during the past 35 years whose usual complaint is, I have said for weeks and months, I am wealthy, I am prosperous, and nothing has happened. 
Okay, has is, maybe you can relate to that. I know a lot of people can. Murphy writes, I discovered that when they said, I am prosperous, I am wealthy, they felt within that they were lying to themselves. That's fucking huge. So they're not building self-conviction that they're wealthy, that they have supply. They feel like they're lying to themselves. Murphy writes, one man told me I have affirmed that I am prosperous until I am tired. Things are now worse. I knew when I made the statement that it was obviously not true. His statements were rejected by the conscious mind and the very opposite of what he outwardly affirmed and claimed was made manifest. In other words, he remained poor, became poor. Things were worse. They weren't, he didn't bring out supply. He brought, he brought out more lack. And it's because his conscious mind fought against what he was affirming. This is why, like Sammy Ingram's advice, as good as it can be about just affirming something over and over again, it doesn't work for a lot of people well at all because of what happened to the guy. They're thinking this is ridiculous. You have to get so exhausted sometimes if you're making an outrageous statement like, you know, I now make $10,000 a day and you're, you're making 20 bucks a day before then. If you're making an outrageous statement like that and you keep on saying it, your conscious mind's probably not going to freaking believe that unless it gets really tired. And then once it gets tired, it might start believing it more. But it's much easier um, to say something like, I'm getting wealthier and wealthier each day, or I'm becoming gradually more and more wealthy, or to simply say, wealth, wealth, success, success, supply, supply, Berenstain Bears, Berenstain Bears. You don't have to say the last thing. Um, say whatever the heck you want, but you want your conscious mind to buy it. And uh, that's a subjective practice, finding out what your subconscious mind easily buys. A statement like wealth, a statement like success, a simple statement like every day in every way I'm getting wealthier and wealthier, which I talk about in 5-Minute Finance as my short guide, Kue inspired guide, much easier to buy that than something like I am now a millionaire. <laughs> Murphy writes, your affirmation secedes best when it is specific and when it does not produce a mental conflict or argument. Pretty damn good advice there. Let me read that again. Your affirmation secedes best when it is specific and when it does not produce a mental conflict or argument. He says, hence the statements made by this man made matters worse because they suggested his lack. Your subconscious accepts what you really feel to be true, not just idle words or statements. The dominant idea or belief is always accepted by the subconscious mind. That is fucking it. That is it. Oh my gosh, that is it. That's what we've been talking about. That's what we always talk about. But these last several videos about building a conviction that you have wealth, that is what it, it, it really comes down to all the time. You know, wealth is simply a subconscious conviction on the part of the individual. When we started these videos like a week ago, that's what we were talking about. And this is what it means. Your subconscious accepts what you really feel to be true, not just idle words or statements. The dominant idea or belief is always accepted by the subconscious mind. Woo! Good stuff. You want to go deeper with me or ask me questions? RadicalCounselor.com. Until next time, have fun.